Migrants are at the center of many hot debates in Guyana. Quite ironic for a country with a high emigration rate and a diaspora larger than its resident population. However, high emigration is the exact reason Guyanese should be wary of these migration trends in their country. The narrative surrounding migrants has become heavily politicized with Guyanese typically following whatever narrative their party feeds them. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about why different groups of migrants are not treated equally, and why, in my opinion, they should not be treated equally. Before we get into the main topic, here's a message from Washington Law Firm, today's sponsor. Divorce is hard, painful, and complicated. After the heartbreak comes paperwork. Washington Law Firm specializes in helping you through that process. We know how hard endings can be, so we take your legal representation seriously. At Washington Law Firm, we provide serious help for serious legal matters like divorce. To book your free consultation, call 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. If you'd like to hire me specifically to host your events, for voiceovers, radio ads, or record other kinds of advertisement, you can also make contact using the same means. The beautiful voice that's in the ad on this video is available to you along with many others. Feel free to make contact and inquire about other services as well. To understand this issue, it's best to study the two most notable recent cases of migration to Guyana, the Haitians and the Venezuelans. Let's compare the two cases to understand the differences and possibly see why the two groups have been treated very differently. According to official reports, the number of Haitian migrants arriving over the last 10 years is somewhere around 42 to 50,000. Attorney General Anil Nandalal raised the alarm suggesting that this influx of migrants from Haiti and Cuba was an indication that Guyana was being used as a transshipment point for human trafficking. As a result, Guyana decided to join most other Caribbean countries by instituting visa requirements for Haitian and Cuban nationals. The treatment of Haitian migrants is best exemplified by a court case which was in the High Court in late 2020 involving 26 Haitian nationals which arrived in the country on November 7th of that year. To summarize the case, 26 Haitian nationals arrived in Guyana on November 7th and were reportedly granted a six-month stay. However, they allegedly provided incorrect information to immigration officers about where they would be staying while in the country. Days later, they were found at a city hotel and in a minibus on the Suzdike Linden Highway. During the first hearing of the case, the Chief Justice granted a conservatory order suspending their deportation pending the hearing and determination of the case. Attorney at law Darren Wade, who represented the 26 Haitian nationals, in his submission relied on the Constitution of Guyana and the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, single market and economy, as well as certain aspects of the matter which bring the revised Treaty of Chagaramas into focus to have the matter referred to the Caribbean Court of Justice for adjudication. The Attorney General, Anil Nandlal, in reply to Wade, contended that the fundamental rights provisions of Guyana's Constitution Specifically, Article 47, which Wade tried to invoke in support of his case, is flawed, since it only applies to citizens of Guyana and other Commonwealth member states, as well as other persons and countries listed therein. According to Minister Nandla, Haiti is not part of those territories since it did not sign on to the free movement aspect of the CSME. He further stressed that Haiti is not included in those territories and as such, these persons are aliens under the constitution of Guyana. In another important part of the story, the police claimed that the Haitians were suspected of being victims of a human trafficking ring, an allegation that the Haitians have consistently denied. President of the Association of Haitian Nationals in Guyana, Kesnel Toussaint had stated that since their detention three weeks ago, the Haitians had been denied counsel, although several requests were made. He contended in the affidavit that the Haitians came to Guyana legally and were granted an automatic six-month stay in keeping with Ghana's obligation to the Treaty of Chagaramas. Recently, Home Affairs Minister Robson Ben disclosed that approximately 33,000 Haitians have been reported as missing over a three-year period. 
following their arrival in Guyana. Ben had claimed that the 26 Haitians, inclusive of seven children, were part of a human trafficking ring. Concerning the Honorable Minister Nandala's stance, it is perfectly reasonable to be concerned about large groups of visitors or migrants, especially if there is the possibility of human trafficking. That said, now that we have a good idea of the facts and events with examples, let's condense the narrative and test it before we move on. To summarize, thousands of Haitians were coming to Guyana over the last decade, arriving at official ports of entry. However, the majority of them were going missing. According to the minister, this signaled that they were part or involved in some sort of human trafficking ring. In its simplest form, thousands of Haitians were arriving in Guyana legally, but they were overstaying or leaving illegally because they were possibly involved in human trafficking. Once again, given the circumstances, this is a warranted level of weariness from the ministers Nandlal and Ben. Now that we understand this stance, let's go to the Venezuelan case. The massive influx of Venezuelans to Guyana is well known. Over the last three to five years, thousands of Venezuelan migrants have arrived on Guyana's shores, making them the largest migrant group in the country by a long way. You can find them in literally every region of the country. Understanding this issue is key, and it's clear that many of them are here for better economic opportunities. The vice president and other government officials have rightfully condemned xenophobia, as again, Migrants should be treated humanely, with respect, and in accordance with the laws of Guyana. This dynamic has been addressed in previous videos, so we can cut straight to analyzing the narrative about Venezuelan migrants. Most prominently are the confident claims that 80% of Venezuelan migrants to Guyana are either Guyanese or have Guyanese ancestry. In contrast to the other migrant case, there hasn't been much chatter about what the Venezuelan migrants are up to, or any possible negative effects of the influx. Importantly, the vice president has warned of the possibility of migrants being used as a Trojan horse amidst the border controversy. And I can't forget to mention also that small numbers of illegal migrants are being deported. Nevertheless, to be consistent, let's analyze the Venezuelan migrant case using the standard and precedent set by ministers Nandalal and Ben. While Venezuela is Ghana's neighbor, its citizens firmly believe that the majority of Ghana's territory belongs to them, which makes them and their government political antagonists of Guyana. This is an important cultural and ideological incompatibility that I addressed in a previous video. Beyond that, an alarming number of them have been arriving illegally, which means that their numbers are not being tracked and recorded as reliably as other migrant groups. Interestingly, we haven't heard any comments about human trafficking or vulnerable women and teens being forced into sex work. Despite the obvious increase in the number of Venezuelan sex workers in Georgetown and interior locations across the country. In fact, buying a Spanish has become a running joke for many Guyanese. Additionally, despite some prominent criminal incidents like the taxi driver who had his neck slashed allegedly by Venezuelan attackers, the narrative about Venezuelan migrants has not taken a turn for the negative. And frankly, I think that hospitality is good in this case. However, it would be remiss of me not to point out that there is clear and blatant inconsistency in the narrative surrounding these different migrant groups. This inconsistency is especially apparent at the political level. While Guyanese on both sides of the political aisle will clamor to parrot whatever their favorite politician is saying about this issue, they are the ones being neglected and in some cases exploited during these migrant waves. Maybe the politicians know something that we don't. Maybe many of the dissenters are right. Ghana isn't a place for Guyanese, just a place for them to be born, grow up, get fed up, and leave. The more the Guyanese people continue to let these inconsistencies go unaddressed, the more they show that they are comfortable with Guyana just being a rest stop for Guyanese, while they search for and eventually find a home somewhere overseas. Why do you think the political narrative about these two migrant groups is completely different? Do you think that every migrant group that comes or stays illegally should be treated as aliens? Have you heard any updates about these investigations into these alleged human trafficking rings? Do you have any interesting stories about either group of migrants? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Be sure to like the video and share it with someone who you think will find this content interesting. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.